Welcome to Firebase Release Notes for February, where we cover big and small releases from Firebase. We have a few topics today, so let's dig in right away. GenKit for Node.js 1.0 is now generally available and production ready. If you're not familiar with GenKit yet, it's an open source framework that enables you to integrate AI-powered agents, automations, and features directly into your apps. We wrote two blog posts, one highlighting all the features available in GenKit 1.0, and one teaching how to efficiently extract structured data from PDFs using GenKit and Gemini 2.0. You should definitely check those out. I'll leave the links in the description below. Also, don't forget to check out this video to learn how to get started with Jenkin. Next, we had some updates on the Firebase Apple SDK. The Zip and Cartage distributions of the Google Mobile Ads SDK with Firebase are now deprecated and will be removed in the next major release. But don't worry, everything is still here for you, and you can easily switch to the recommended binary distribution which you'll find in the AdMob documentation. And if you've got any questions, we've put together a handy FAQ document to clear things up. You can find the link below. Moving on, we've got an important update regarding Firebase authentication and dynamic links. As you might know, Firebase dynamic links is shutting down on August 25, 2025. This will affect a few Firebase authentication features, specifically email link authentication for mobile apps, OAuth flows for older Android SDK versions, and Cordova OAuth support for web apps. To keep using these features after the shutdown, all you need to do is migrate to a newer SDK version and follow a few extra steps. We've put together a migration guide with detailed instructions to make this transition as smooth as possible for you. The link's available in the description. And speaking of keeping things running smoothly, We've got some exciting news for those of you using Firebase Performance Monitoring. We're always looking for ways to give you more insights into your app's performance, and now we've added three new Core Web Vital metrics. Largest Contentful Paint, Interaction to Next Paint, and Cumulative Layout Shift. These metrics are helpful for understanding how your users are experiencing your web app's loading performance. If you want to dive deeper into these Core Web Vitals, we've got a detailed guide linked below. Just a quick heads up before we move on to the next update. You'll notice a slight increase in your app size due to a new dependency in the updated Performance Monitoring SDK. Now, let's talk about Test Lab. We recently published a list of deprecated devices, as you can see here. These devices will be completely removed on March 31st. So, we recommend that you move to an ARM virtual device if you're currently using one of them. I've linked the deprecated devices documentation below, so you can check what's the recommended replacement for you. Last, we have exciting updates on the Vertex AI in Firebase SDKs. Vertex AI in Firebase now supports image generation using the Imagine 3 model. This opens up a whole new world of potential for your apps, as you're now able to generate unique, custom images right within your client app's code. Imagine 3 support is available on public preview. Check out the Vertex AI in Firebase documentation and the Firebase Quick Start repositories on GitHub for examples on how you can use it. And those were all the updates we had time for today. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. My name is Marina, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.